Okay, I waited for the duration of the line, but it really wasn't that long. Here's another coffee shop. These coffee shops are almost uh, coffee drive drive throughs They always seem to be vacant. But they also seem to be as common as the Oregon Lotto places. Gas station, Chevron. Now this little area, Klamath Falls, is kind of like a little valley surrounded by mountains. And there's a lot of that in Oregon. A lot of places to live. There's, there's a big Subway sandwich. There's Taco Bell number two. And we're coming up amongst Walmart here and at E&W, the only place I've seen E&W before in my life, was in Mentone, California, near San Bernardino. Here's our Long John Silver's Big Five. Payless shoe source, although I never ever like the shoes that come out of there. And the only reason why they're going to be able to survive next to Walmart is they're cheap as hell and the quality is crap, <laughs> probably. Sorry, Payless, but that's just the way it is. Some people need those shoes, so they get it. You want working shoes? Go to Payless. Okay, let me go over here to a little bit of a empty area. Now, you'll see this kind of thing in Coma. In, you'll see just empty, open areas. Right next door to probably one of the big, one of the busiest shops in the country. Now, I don't want them barking at me. I was up in the Bay Area taking my camera, just messing around, just making a funny video at the Knob Hill Foods, and the guy says, you can't have a video in here, so I didn't do that. But anyway, this is a Walmart Super Center, so it has, your, it has McDonald's in it. I don't think that's the only McDonald's in town. It's got shopping, and it has everything you'd find in Walmart. Here's the parking. This is Monday. It's a weekday. So, yeah, I, I hope I won't get flagged down on trying to come in here. So I'm not trying to do anything wrong. I'm just trying to show the difference between the volume of traffic that you would get here at this Walmart and the other ones. Now, there's no sales tax up here either. i say the state tax is about equivalent. Also, as you look around, you can see a lot of trucks that um, have... Pretty much evidence they endured some kind of effects of snow and whatnot. Some truck humming in the background. Birds, a lot of goals up here. And I guess you can just see from. Although my main purpose isn't to go to Walmart, I'm just trying to show you. If, if this is one of the busier places in town, you understand, during the week, obviously I guess at 5 o'clock it's going to be busier than this, maybe 4 or 5 times as many people coming out of here. But that's about it, I guess you get a glimpse in there. I don't want to get moved down or waste a lot of time in Walmart. Also, there's a breeze right now. Some cumulus clouds. I happen to be wearing a jacket, but it's only because of the slight breeze that there is. The breeze come in. The breeze comes in off the mountains. Basically, heat rises as the heat rises. Uh, the cold air comes down from the mountains that surround us. But it's not. It's not like a <laughs> tornado death trap or anything. It, it never gets is. Uh, as windy as it gets sometimes in L.A. and the Santanas. Or a few times I've seen up in, even up in the Bay Area. It gets about as breezy as if you're walking on that plank in Palo Alto up over the, um, over the bay. <laughs> I forgot the name of that center. Here's a car that is definitely has been snowed upon and had pieces of ice nice uh, salt scattered about it. There's always a little bit of dirt. There's a tiniest bit of dirt that kind of dried on. There's residue dust when you're here in this area. But it ain't that bad. And almost it's kind of like the brand name look of, <laughs> of Oregon, really. Okay. 
Now, next thing I'm going to do, we're going to do a little bit of doubling back, but maybe you can catch things that you missed. I'm not going to go out that way, because then I have to make it right. Now, when I first got here, there used to be a way you can go, I could go back home a third way. Um, there was a little road over here behind me that you can't see, and you wouldn't be able to see even if I turned the camera around. And that would take you to the entrance and on-ramp for 97, and then I would be able to take that up to Oregon Avenue and get off there, because that's where I live. And I don't know what Maurice's is, but there it is. Here's a Wingers, a Goodwill. I guess things that I just didn't get a channel. Michelin Tire Center over there, BF Goodrich. Norco, there's, I guess, welding gas supplies. And all across America in the more rural areas, you're always going to see American-made trucks everywhere. Okay. As you can see, the, 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 the lights just aren't stupidly and overly overburdensome as they are in Santa Clara. You just sit there and get a chapter of your book, and then it'll turn green. Is if the lights were decent in Santa Clara, I might go there more often to squeeze in a visit or two to my to my niece and nephew, which I'd like to do more often. If I wasn't busy, I'd be there more often. That's for damn sure. Okay. The really the lights aren't that bad. Now this is Washburn. I'm going to go all the way up Washburn to, to the Crater Lake Parkway that I mentioned uh, maybe two videos ago that I would have made a left on, and that's where that that piece of river was that I guessed, I probably guessed incorrectly, I don't think that could be, how could that be the Klamath River? Could be, <laughs> so I just wish I knew a little more, I've, I've had a home up here for about five years, but I just don't know everything, you know, okay, what is this on the left, RNG Grand Buffet, it's a big place, Staying anything that big to stay in business got to be damn good because um, there's a decent population. The county has maybe about 20,000 people in it. I'm, I'm being over generous, I know, but I think that's about right. Then you see storage sheds kind of there. It's a, it's a pleasant, affordable place to do. So if you, you know if you're if you're um, to live, so if you. Now, the only thing you have to worry about, this right now, of course, there isn't snow on the ground, so I guess I'll get into that while we're doubling back, so you can just take a look at some of the things around here. The only thing to worry about, depending on your ability to, your sure-footedness, most people don't really need to worry about slipping in the, uh, in the snow while they walk on, on, the, on the sidewalk or something like that, but if you're just a little bit, if you're not very well, not very sure-footed, you know, a little bit of trouble walking, or it's a little, you know, you might run into trouble, you might have a slip if you ever um, step on some ice that's accumulated on the sidewalk, and, but it's not like this is an, an <laughs> ice on the sidewalk heaven and every, everywhere you turn. A lot of people do a good job of clearing off their, their sidewalks, but of course, it, you know, you can't always get everything. You know, sometimes, the snow is coming down a lot. There's going to be snow on the ground, even though they're, you know, the infrastructure at that point breaks down a little bit, um, but not to the extent that it really does damage. There's just snow there. You, you never can have a situation where you don't have any snow on the ground, and there's a tractor to scoop it up right away is what I'm trying to say. But sometimes when the snow accumulates and it's big and it's there for a few days, ice, thin ice sheets are there that are visible for the most part, can accumulate. <coughs> accumulate. Also, okay, as after I go up the parkway, I'm going to make a right, and I'm going to go to the <clears throat> the college area. I think OS... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let the signs tell me what it is. I think it might be Oregon Institute of Technology. There is a university up there, and a little kind of other kind of little... <laughs> I guess quasi downtown. We've seen three of them. We've seen Main Street, we've seen this Sixth Street, we've seen this Washburn. I wouldn't really call Washburn a downtown. It's not really a, a 
white collar business area, but these are just business centers. Washburn is definitely a business center. You got Allstate, Donut Shop, uh, Thrift Store, Jiffy Lou, Sprint Store. Okay, now up here is a Fred Meyer. I've never had encountered Fred Meyer until I had come to live here. Fred Meyer is owned by the same company that owns Knob Hill. And this is basically kind of like Knob Hill Foods' uh, response to Walmart Super Centers. It's, it's a nice place to go in. There's a little Carl's Jr. in there, Chase Bank. You can get gas here. Here are just some of the houses. You can look down one of the streets there. Um, what am I doing on top? I'm doing okay. Here's a Lippitz Carpet Center. You notice when you see these places to go buy things, like, um, well, that's available for rent or available for purchase by Fisher and Nicholson. When you see these businesses, there's a child care center there, you notice they're, they're, they're good size. And you can imagine that they're being good size. They have a good amount of stock in it. You're not going to go wanting. You have to drive over to Medford to get something. Now, I did have to drive to Medford to drop off a package to be shipped you know, on the same day from UPS. UPS, of course, will pick up from here, but if you want to drop something off of UPS, you got to go to Medford for that. It's the only thing I've seen. And that, that is a couple-hour drive. Here is... What a, yeah, sometimes you'll just see places that used to be hotels a long time ago converted into housing. It's a little medical center. This is, I think, an apartment area, Pelican Point, if, I, if I'm right. Or it could be a condo, I'm, I'm just not sure. Now, up here somewhere, there is a triple A. I'm not sure exactly where. I remember getting a map up here, or maybe it's up near the college, and here we are at Crater Lake uh, Parkway. We got a red light. And got 12 minutes on this, and this this light seems to be a little bit longer. Oh God! Here we go. Okay, and you can see there is plenty of law enforcement around here. This is the closest thing to freeway we got, but there are stops here. <laughs> it looks a little sparse in this area. Up to the right, there is there there's housing. Nice surface of every area housing. I think right up here is the high school. I got that right. Now, of course, I've never been there. It's a church. There's a lot of churches in this town. Assembly of God. Mom was taking me there when I was a kid. There's a Klamath County Museum on Main Street that I've never been in. I probably should go there. Um, hell, it might be nice to have a little YouTube video there, too. Who knows? Maybe they have other ones. Here's some housing that is the closest thing to the urban sprawl type housing that is now in uh, where Sunmark system used to be and where um, uh, higher Ricky's and Palo Alto used to be, but um, <laughs> Bay Area type sprawl is, you know, it's not much of a sprawl. They truly try to make a look at it. What is this? This is a recovery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, hi, okay. Um, you can get direct TV around here, but obviously a lot of people have used direct TV. Just the look of some of the houses. And you could just, you know, you just have to keep in mind, you have to know that um, the, the, the di weather diversity is going to have an impact. And if you see a house that looks in good condition, you might want to, hey, How'd you accomplish that? I mean, basically, it's, it's brick that keeps it. Uh, if you use brick, you're you're not going to have a lot of, I guess, expansion and contraction, or you just don't need to use paint, so therefore it isn't going to show. Nice little street corner here, I guess. Okay, I better stop.